episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is Cycle 2, Week 5, Science. For everyone else, that just means that we're going to be talking about some cycles in nature. Before we jump in, go ahead and head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. There you'll find um, workbooks with worksheets that correlate with each of these videos to help expand the learning on each of these topics. And you can find a link for that in the description. So without further ado, let's start doodling. The first cycle that we are going to talk about today is the water cycle. Every living thing on earth needs water. And so water is very important and it moves through a cycle. The world's water moves between lakes, rivers, oceans, and the atmosphere, as well as on the land. It can be a liquid, a gas, or a solid. So let's jump into the water cycle at evaporation. What is evaporation? The energy from the sun will heat up the surface of the earth. And when it does this, it causes the temperature of the water in lakes, oceans, streams, and rivers to rise. And when this happens, this water evaporates into the air. Plants and trees also lose water into the atmosphere through their leaves. And this specific process is called transpiration, which we talk more about in other Doodling Through Education videos. Now let's move through the water cycle into condensation. As the water vapor rises into the sky, it then cools and turns back into a liquid. This process forms clouds. Then we move to precipitation. When too much water has condensed, then water droplets in the clouds become too heavy for the air to hold them up and so they fall back down to the earth. It, they can fall back down to the earth as precipitation through rain, hail, or even snow. Now let's jump over to the collection part of the water cycle. This fall in precipitation is then collected back into the bodies of water, such as rivers and oceans, and then the water cycle starts all over again. Water can also fall onto the ground or on vegetation, and this water can either be taken up into plants by the roots in the earth, or it can evaporate and into the air directly from there. Next up, let's talk about the carbon cycle. And as we do that, I'd like to also touch on the oxygen cycle because these two cycles are very closely tied together. So first, let's talk about carbon. Carbon makes up about 18% of a human body and is found all around us in the world and seen in all sorts of processes on our planet. Nature is constantly taking carbon out of the atmosphere. One of the ways it does this is through photosynthesis. And we've talked about photosynthesis in the past, but plants use photosynthesis to make energy from sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. And they turn this into oxygen and sugar. Another way that carbon is added into the atmosphere is through breathing. Every time you breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide. Another place we see carbon in the world is when plants and animals die and then they decay. When this happens, the carbon that is in their body is released either into the atmosphere or stored in the ground. A last way that we see carbon 
entering the atmosphere is when plants, trees, or fossil fuels are burned. Carbon is essential for life, and nature truly does a great job of balancing carbon in the carbon cycle. Now let's talk about the oxygen cycle because it is so tied into the carbon cycle. Oxygen is also constantly being used and created by different processes. An example is through photosynthesis as well. So when plants take in sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, they create oxygen and sugar. And so in this way, you can see how the carbon and oxygen cycle are interconnected. Again, we talked about breathing. When animals breathe oxygen, they breathe out carbon dioxide. So oxygen is needed for the process of respiration. For combustion to happen in the world, a fire needs oxygen. Without oxygen, you can't have a fire. Here's some fun facts about oxygen. Even though fish do not necessarily breathe underwater because they do not have lungs, their gills still extract oxygen from the water. Another fun fact is that one of the biggest sources of oxygen in the world is phytoplankton. They live near the surface of the ocean and are tiny plants and they produce oxygen through photosynthesis. Now, let's talk about the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen moves between plants, animals, bacteria, and the air and soil in the ground. And so it is also an important element to life on Earth. There are different forms of nitrogen. There is nitrogen in the air or N2. There are nitrates, nitrites, and ammonium. So the first stop in the nitrogen cycle is fixation. Fixation is the first step in making nitrogen usable by plants. Here, bacteria change nitrogen into ammonium. Then nitrification happens, and this is the process by which ammonium gets changed into nitrates by bacteria. Nitrates are the state of nitrogen that plants can absorb. Then is assimilation. And this is how the plant gets that nitrogen. And they do this by absorbing the nitrates from the soil through their roots. And then ammonification. And this is part of the decaying process. So when a plant or animal dies, decomposers, which we talked about last week, turn the nitrogen back into ammonium so it can re-enter the nitrogen cycle. And then there is also denitrification. This is when extra nitrogen in the soil actually gets put back into the atmosphere. And there are special bacteria that help to perform this task. So nitrogen is very important because plants and animals could not live without it. It's important for many of the processes in our cells and is even in our DNA. An interesting fact about nitrogen is that about 78% of the atmosphere is made out of it. Nitrogen is often used in many fertilizers to help plants grow. Nitrogen has no color, smell, or taste. And only about 3% of your body weight is nitrogen. And that's all we have for today. Be sure to head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com and grab those workbooks and do those worksheets throughout the week. I think it'll really help your student to expand upon the topics covered in this video. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.